So I'm going to import the images, uh, the images that members sent and some of mine. So I, I can show you both. Well, first I will import and please keep in mind that this is not a lesson, but what Lightroom can do, well, what you can do with Lightroom and also the way I edit. So. Just be patient, it's important. Oh, okay, Keith, thanks. So, I, I will start with some of mine and then I, I, I'll go on to the members. All right, first of all, to, to, to start editing in, in Lightroom, you have to go to the develop up here and start obviously the editing so you can what I'm going to do I'm going to create a, a visual copy sorry I'm a bit hesitant but I've never talked on my own <laughs> usually I have people in front of me this is the first time for me so so I created a virtual copy, so I edit on it. And then you can see the before and after together. Somebody's mic on. All right, so first I try the white balance. I try auto, but it didn't work. So I get the pipette or whatever you call it. So while 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 editing, you can hold down the Alt key and move. And when you start seeing the clipping, it means that there is no detail in, in that clipping. A good thing to do is to switch on from the histogram the highlight clipping and the shadows clipping. So. I'm gonna show you so you know what I mean. If I go, when you see the red, it means that you don't have detail in, in those parts. When you see the blue, it means that you don't have detail in the shadows. You can go to color and adjust from the color. Crop is up. When you click on the crop, you, you will get the rule of thirds nine boxes. If you close the padlock, it will keep the proportions. But if you want to do a custom switch of the mic, please. If you want to do a custom crop, just open the padlock and then you can move around the way you want it. Once ready, hit enter. I need to put shadows on. Sorry to interrupt, um, Joe Magri. Um, the screen I must have you read the for it at Tamil Martin. But can you see my screen, Emma? You might need to minimize Mi everything Geraldine, else. Geraldine, Ger Geraldine, Geraldine, please, please, Geraldine. Uh, Tell me, uh, Chan. Hale uh, fiidi, Geraldine, Alessa, please. All right. MIPP, correct. No, MIPP members online meeting. Who did, display one, who are blank. Did you, you, did you join the chat? Yes, 
Yes, I did, and I will join again. I'll go out and I'll join again, Martin. Oh, no all, right, all right, all right, let, let me know. Okay. So, what I forgot is lens correction is a good thing to do in the beginning because I forgot to do it. I just saw you. So uh, I take remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And Lightroom automatically will find your lens profile, the make and model. If not, you can click and choose whichever you want. Maybe it didn't choose the right one for you. So you just click and, and choose the right one. Or sometimes uh, you won't find it. Uh, you can download from Adobe. If not, you can find a, a similar one. This is just to, to help you out. All right, yes, because I shot this in high ISO, I'm going to do some noise reduction from the detail. In detail, put it up to 75, uh, or roughly 75. Ooh. Roughly 75. Uh, a good point is to, when doing these things like noise reduction, don't go over 50 because then you, you will lose all the detail. Decal luminance contact type, don't go yeah. over 50. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you. Welcome. And always also look at the curve, uh, sorry, at the histogram, that it's from left to right touching. This is a good histogram, as you can see. No, I'm happy with the photo. I mean, there wasn't much to edit here. And I will sharpen it in Lightroom. I will go up to... 75 this is like the the unsharp mask over here now i'm gonna hold alt key and when i move the masking down here you will see where you are seeing white is where it's going to be sharpened so keep on going until until you are happy and, and mainly the, the edges are, are, are lit. Okay, good, Kurt, thank you. All right, now to see what we did. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Over here. Over. Man. I don't know what happened. Ma. Be patient with me. before and after. All right, switch off mic, I am. So, now, I have these photos, which are 
I took as a panorama and I want to stitch them in Lightroom and not in, in, in Photoshop. Uh, first of all, obviously edit all photos that you have. In the end, all you have to do is choose them all, right click, photo merge, panorama. It will create a preview. You will see what's going to happen. Don't worry about the white parts. That's because you should, when you shoot the panorama, switch off the mic, please. Once you're happy with, click on merge. And Lightroom, as you can see up here, is creating the panorama. And it's done. It will make a DNG file of the panorama. And all you have to do now is crop. And now a good thing is to not keep the proportions, but to choose my liking of the panorama. So that, that was easily done. It's obviously. Martin, I'm going to go to the Yes. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the laptop. I'm going to go to the monitor. I'm going to go to the in English, Kevin. In English. Kevin, in English, please. Ah, friggin'. Whoever wants to ask a question, please switch on the mic, your your mic, for, for the moment, just the time you ask the question, okay? And find a gap while Martin is talking. Okay. Thank you. So, <clears throat> let's say now I want to, to convert this to black and white. All I have to do is go in, on basic. I have black and white here. Click on it. Don't tell me it's ready. All right. But it's, it's in black and white and I will edit further more to, to get more contrast in the blacks and, and the whites. I go on the tone curve. The tone curve, you have presets here, medium contrast and strong contrast. I like to use these a lot or else you can adjust manually, like in Photoshop. Okay. Can adjust more the blacks. More the whites, I will do a gradient in this guy. So I chose the gradient, but as you can see, I, I, I went over the, the church or whatever it is here. What I'm gonna do is show selected mask overlay, tick it on. So you see the red, the red is telling us where it's gonna work, but obviously I want to work on just on the sky and not, not on the buildings. So Martin, not. it's Renata. Uh, can you show gradient, which which tool? This one up here. Okay, okay, grazie. Welcome. Come on, range mask, luminance, and from range, uh, obviously the left is the shadows, and the right is the highlight. So I don't want the gradient to work on the shadows or the dark areas. So I start moving around and as you can see, the mask is removed or nearly removed from the building. 
Now, obviously switch off the mask overlay, so you see wh what is happening. And as you can see, you can see where it's working. Issa, you are seeing two rectangles here. So, I, I switch on again, so you see. This is where it's working, and but from the middle till down here, it's gonna feather it. So it's like doing the mask and then going on Gaussian blur, which Kevin doesn't like. <laughs> Once you're happy, hit enter and enter again. If for some reason I want to go back, just click on the gradient. You will see the dot, click on it, and I, I can adjust furthermore, and hit enter. So, no, no, no. To turn it, uh, an image, just right click and rotate left or right, depends your image. So. Well, I will go on lens correction, remove chromatic aberration and enable. Also, I, I like to use the transform. First, I try the auto. It didn't work good. So, I will further up on, on another image. I, I will show you how it works because over here, obviously, I don't need much. To to, to do the transform, but what I'm gonna do is crop for now. Come on the basic, hold down the alt, so I see the highlights. Where so the white clipping is where I don't have the idea. So I start moving the hi the highlights to the left. Ooh. And now I have detail everywhere. As for the shadows, I will do the same. Hold the Alt key and move the shadows. I'm not going to exaggerate here. All right. That's that. Since there's not much to do, I click on black and white. Obviously, I need this black and white. I go on Tone Curve. Strong contrast. As you can see, although it's gone dark, let me do a darker gray. Uh, over here, if you right click on the sides, you can change the way the background, how you want to see it. Uh, I do it gray, so, so you will see. So, since I don't have blue clippings in the shadows, it means that I have detail there. Now what I have to do is sharpen it. I go up to around 75, hold down the Alt and start moving. Usually it's between 90 and 95 I find it, but every, every photo is different. So that is done, maybe this is bugging me up there, that white part, so the good thing is that you are just editing in Lightroom, if, if you go in the folder where you have the photos, you will find no editing has been done on it, so it's a non-destructive. If you want to upload this on social media or send it to somebody, you need to export the image. So it will export with, with the edits that you've done. All you have to do is go on in library and click on export or right click and export. Click export. Martin, what happens if you move the folder?
If you move the folder, it depends where you move it from. If you move it from Lightroom, it's no problem. If you don't move it from Lightroom, good question. Tom, I, I, I will show you what happens. Okay, thank you. Welcome. If you don't find the folder, let, let, let me do this. So you will, you will see, oh, this is Kate's talk. <laughs> I, I will move it. All right. I, I, I moved the folder not in Lightroom. I suggest whenever you, if, if you're using Lightroom, whatever you do to move a folder, to rename it, to create a folder, do everything from Lightroom. So you don't get this. You get the question mark here and, and it, it's, it's not highlighted. All you have to do if that that's what happens and obviously you know where you've put or, or dragged the, the folder right click on it find missing folder obviously I know I, I've done it on, on the desktop click desktop Martin choose and now obviously it, it's telling me it's on the desktop and not on the desktop in Lightroom Skype talk pick. So I go back and everything is there. This even happens if you move uh, uh, an image, not, not, not a folder. It's, you have to do it the same time. Yeah, by the way, I'm working on Adobe Lightroom Classic. All right. So, so I, I will come back to the exporting. I click on export. Choose export, obviously. I, I always choose to, to export on, on my desktop, so I easily find it. Name the, the, the folder, um, my PB Skype. Choose the format, JPEG, PSD, TIFF, PNG, digital, whatever. I'm going to leave it to the color space that you want. The file, image file size. 1000 is one megabyte so it won't be larger than one megabyte i want it 2000 pics on the longest side so i i do width and height 2000 and it will choose the longest side and do it 2000 on that side and it will calculate the other side automatically you can do a logo or watermark whatever i'm gonna do this so you will see what i'm doing sharpen for if I, i'm gonna upload it on social media i i like to to tick sharpen for screen and click export you will see lightroom exporting hopefully all right so Where's the my PP Skype? And now I have the image. So the 2000 pixels are on this side and automatically it, it shows the size over here for me. And the logo did it come. Oops. That's because I have removed that logo. But I, I will do this again to show you how to do a logo, oh, a, a watermark. Let's do a watermark so it will be easy. Export, edit watermarks, text, copyright Martinajos, save, Martin Skype, create. And now it's in, in my watermark. You, you can do as many watermarks as you want. And then just choose the one that you want. And now I click export. Obviously, it's telling me that this image is already there. Use unique names or overwrite. I'm going to overwrite because I don't need both. And now 
I have the watermark. The good thing with Lightroom is, uh, with watermarks, is that once you set the watermark where you want it, 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 it doesn't matter what size the image is, it will always do it in, in the same place for you. So I find it better than Photoshop because you have to, to choose a watermark every time. Depends of, of the image size that you have. You can do a, a, a logo or graphic, yes. Uh, I will show you. Export, export. Yes, I, I don't think I have a, a watermark here, but all you have to do is click on graphic. Obviously, you go and find a logo. I, I'm going to do a photo. Huh? But it can be a logo. Uh, but the graphic needs to be JPEG or DNG. PNG, sorry. You can see it here. It's anchored on the, on the left, but now I want it on the right. I want it 5 and and five up from the bottom. Click save. I'm gonna name it image create. And now when I export it, I'm gonna use unique names now. This could be the logo, eh? but I just did an image because I don't have a logo because I'm working on my laptop and I don't have everything here. So this is with the watermark and this is with in brackets the logo now another good thing is that editing in Lightroom if you have similar conditions and you were shooting in the same place, uh, you can very quickly edit them all. All you have to do is just click one. As you can see, I have these synchrons. I'm just gonna edit the first one. Go to develop. Lens correction, remove and enable. Uh, I know I shot this in around 10,000 ISO. Sixteen thousand ISO actually. So I have quite some noise there. So I will go up to, uh, to fifty and detail. This is big the percentage of detail to keep. Alright, as you can see it already came a bit better with the noise. A bit of shadow highlights so I get that bugger off. Now rad radial filter is a good think it's like gradient but obviously it's a circle or, or oval you just click and drag I have the circle or round shape I can adjust and turn how I want it now you have to be careful because what happens is Or you can do the editing on the outside of the circle. Let's call it a circle. Or either inside. So what I want to do is inside. So I click invert. And as you can see, now it's working in there. Once I'm happy, I hit enter. All right.
no, let's say I'm ready with the editing. All you have to do is stay on the image that you edited, most important, okay? Hold down the shift key and go till the end of the batch that you want to do the same editing to it. So instead of going one by one to edit them, all I have to do is, now that they are chosen, I click synchronize, choose whatever you want, I, I like to click on check all, but I switch off the crop, because obviously the crop will definitely be different for every photo, and I just click synchronize, and now, as you can see here, when I go on the images, it has the same editing. So this saves me a lot, a lot of time. Over here, let's say the transform, I think, will work good here. Auto. Bang. So, obviously, you have to be careful not to cut feet. If not, just click on the crop and adjust. Or also try the auto from here. This, this is good, especially when, when you are shooting seascapes, so the horizon is makes it straight for you. Instead of the doing it yourself, clicking from here to there, like the ruler in, in, in Photoshop, I just click auto, because it does it for me, and hit enter. That's good. Let me go on, on some of your images. Because most of you, that's what you want. It's, uh, those who send me one, I'm gonna do one, obviously. But those who send me more than one, I will first do choose one, and then if I will have time, uh, I I will do the rest. All right. So I will go and develop lens correction and I remove and enable. So this was shot with a Canon EFS 18 to 200. Very good. Transform, it won't work good because there is no, so I will work with the crop to see. Let me keep. No, no. A bit of shadow, so I get more detail. Now I'm gonna do a gradient for this guy. <coughs> Before doing the gradient. In profile, you can choose <coughs> the type of image that you have. For landscape, just click on Adobe Landscape and it will adjust the colors and the image for you. But, obviously, you will continue to edit. So, uh, this is Viorica. Viorica, when you shoot this type of images, obviously, be careful of the sun is, is too harsh, so be careful because you will lose detail in the sky. <coughs> but a good image. Obviously, working with filters help you better. Now, if I want to see where I'm working and I want to remove. Uh, I uh, sorry. My sound is full on. I, I can hardly hear you. Uh, can you do selective editing with Lightroom? 
selective in what? In, what, in what? the sense that you only select, for example, the sky. This is the only way that you can do it. Mm, okay. As you can see, it's just selecting the sky. Using the gradient too. Ye yes. The gradient or, 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 or even the radial, it depends yes. what you have. But for obviously for this, the gradient is the best to use. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. No, a bit of contrast. No, I forgot that to, to get this guy a bit better, it needs a bit of contrast. Obviously, always don't over, overdo things. And the good thing is working on, on, on raw files is obviously better than, than working in on JPEGs, because even the white balance here, you have all these customs, but if you have JPEG, or I have JPEGs here, you will see that, that you will only have as short auto and custom. That's all. No. You can do a gradient from the bottom as well, obviously not the highlights. Lightroom always remember the, the, the last edit that you've done. But I don't care. If, uh, I'm gonna do this manually. I will try to do a bit of split toning. Split toning is to give color to the highlights and to the shadows. So for the highlights, let's say I want to make the, the sky a bit warmer. I, I click on, on this box here. Obviously find the right place and adjust. how much you want. And as you can see, there's a box here that goes up and down. Obviously, if you go to the top, it's going to be too saturated. If you go to the bottom, it's nearly saturated. So just be careful. And now for the shadows, obviously I have the same. And adjust. that detail alt and move the mask and I'm happy at 86 it's a bit over saturated so <coughs> Or you can go back to the split toning, or go back to the basic, and from saturation or vibrance, remove a bit. If you're not happy, double click, and it will go back to zero, but go on the split toning, and from here, saturation, move it a bit down, move it over here. And that, in my opinion, is the best I can do. Because this guy, I cannot work much on it. But if you don't have uh, filters, 
these kind of images. Take one exposure <coughs> for the land and take another exposure for the sky. And then obviously you will need Photoshop for this, but you can do all the edits here and then go into Photoshop and change the sky. Now for Lucien, it needs a bit of white balance. HDR, yes, it's also available, but I hate HDR, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like to work on it. I'm not saying it's not good, but it's just me. So, to adjust the white balance, this is a TIFF file that was sent by Lucien, so obviously there was editing done already here. I guess. So, as you can see from the profile, I, I don't have much. I only have color and monochrome. So, I will go on the pipette, or what the hell they call it, and try to find a gray place. As you can see, while I'm moving, it's showing me how, how it's, it's going to be. Click on it. It's a bit oversaturated, so I will put down the saturation a bit down. Uh, the dropper, thank you, Leo. So, you can also adjust color by color. If you come down to HSL or color, choose the color. This guy is a bit, the blue is a bit out of. As you can see, I can change everything or move a bit down the saturation or the luminance. No, it needs a bit of contrast. Tone curve. Uh, over here it's a bit too dark, so I, I will choose the gradient. If, if you want a straight gradient, all you have to do is hold down the shift key and move the gradient and it, it will remain straight for you. And you can adjust accordingly. Now darken a bit this way. Over here we can see the luminance should work better here. Switch off the overlay. I will try to warm up this because I'm not that happy with it. Right. Warm it looks a bit better. A bit the highlight down. Always when you're editing, it's the best thing is to have a calibrated monitor, obviously. And working with laptops, it differs the angle of, of your monitor, how it is from one day to another, even from one hour to another. I will go to the detail, to the sharp, do a bit of sharpening. Alt and move the mask. Now in the beginning I told you to do a visual copy, so we see the before and after. So let me do this. Create a visual copy. 
it will create it with all the editing that I've done. I will go back to the original photo, right click, settings, reset. So now I can view the before and after. Not much has been done. I will do the same for Viorica, for Viorica's sake. Yeah, the virtual copy. Uh, sorry, you have to click on the photo over here, not, not, not down in the film strip. Reset. Over here. For some reason, something went wrong. So, let me do it. Ah, ah, good. What was amazing? I don't know what happened this not happening. This one and after. So I have to go this way. I don't know what happened. So this is of Lucien, so for now I skip it and we have three of Mark. I'm gonna start with the visual copy. Develop I will go lens correction. Thanks, so auto. Oh, sorry. I need to go on one image. No, I always try the, the white balance in auto first, and it worked fine. A bit so, but if you're not happy, just give it a bit more touch to your liking. Over here, gonna give it a bit of shadow, get the highlights down. So, these steps are a bit too bright, in my opinion. So, I will do a gradient. With the highlights, so they are not that bright. Obviously, seeing this photo, I, I already know that I'm gonna, in the end, I'm gonna convert it into black and white. That is me uh, when I see street photography. That's that goes in my mind. And these two are, are a perfect couple, not because I know them, but because she is in black and he is in white. So th that 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 will help us. A bit of contrast. A good thing with this image that it, it's although it's a raw raw file, it's it's sharp. So now I have to do is just go to black and white. I will go to the tone curve now. Now I'm getting a bit of blue clippings in the shadow areas so what I need to do is go and give it a bit more shadows but I will turn down the highlights to have just a tiny bit of blue, no detail in, in, in part of the photo for me it doesn't matter what matters is that you don't have all the chamber with, without detail just a little bit out of the that it will be okay. Maybe Kevin or, or Keith or, or Tom can add their comment. A bit of the haze. 
Thank you, Duncan. Detail. So I sharpen it now. Alt and mask. That's it. And I'm happy. No, let's say this again. Alright. So as you can see, and I can switch off the lights so you can see it better. Oops. It's not working there. No, no. It's because I have the monitor, it's working on the monitor, the lights off, and it's not working over here. Anyway. So those are these. This is Georgia as well. Georgia. Joe Franca Lanza. Alright, I, I will edit this this one. Lens correction, remove and enable. Transform. Over here it should work well. Let's work a bit. Well, or I know that. I want to get rid of this wall here. I have to leave that wall bit. If I could, I, I would remove it. But Lightroom, Lightroom is, is good to, because it's sort of it has part of bridge, part of camera raw, and part of Photoshop. But it's not Photoshop. Mainly I use Lightroom to edit, <coughs> but if I'm entering a competition or doing an exhibition or qualification, I, I will finish it in Photoshop uh, after I've done all the edits here. So, unfortunately, we still need to use Photoshop. So, no, a bit of shadow, so we can see this guy here. Now I'm going to use the brush instead of the gradient or the radial, but uh, the radial I will use it. As you can see, the gradient, the radial and the brush use the same setup. And it remembers what I did with the gradient or with the radial the last time. As you can see, the highlights are minus 43. What I'm going to do is now just brush, adjust the brush size, and brush. So uh, I'm going to exaggerate so, so you can see better. So to see where I've brushed. Click on show selected mask. If I went overboard or I missed a part, I, I can do this. Obviously, I am a bit in a hurry because I don't have time, but to do these things, you do them carefully and even zoom in so, so you do it properly. The good thing is with the brushes that I can click on erase and I will come where. I stepped out. Of the lines. And remove. Where I don't want. The editing to be done. Hold down the shift key so you get the hand and move the image when you are zoomed in. So 
So if I'm not happy, it's a bit maybe too dark for me. Just go back to the brush, click on the spot, remove the mask overlay, and I again adjust to my liking now. But now I want to brighten this guy with the brush, so obviously remove the settings. Have a smaller brush, click on the A, and then this guy back in here. If you don't see anything happen, all you have to do is come on the exposure, and as you can see, I can drive them. Where I brush, hit enter. I, I, I want to, to get more, more detail here in the shadows. I'm going to use the radial filter now. You don't need to be 100% here. Switch off the exposure, invert so it works inside, and put a bit of shadow. Don't overdo it because you will get noise. Just to add more detail. Once you're happy, just click enter. Bit of contrast, and I think I put thin a little bit. Not that much. Don't care. Let me try it in black and white. Yes, I love it in black and white as usual. Yes, I am close enough. Because I, I, when I turn to, to look at the sky, <laughs> I will lose the voice. Sorry. Medium contrast or strong. Strong to have more punch. I will add a bit of dehaze. So the two whites the the blacks and that's from one to another now Renata so Let's start with the lens correction. <coughs> now, for a quick thing to do the lens correction to all the images that I have here, just control or command and click on A, synchronize. No, instead of choosing everything, choose none. Find the lens correction, click on it, and synchronize. No, I don't have to go one by one to, to, to do the lens correction. No, they will all be done. So then behave. Not, not, not many questions. Eh? I'm expecting you to ask questions, guys uh, and girls. Transform to see what happens. Much better. A bit. More shadow. <laughs> no. The radial filter is good to do a vignette also. Just choose the right oval, whatever. Now it needs to be ticked off the invert so it will work outside. I'm going to exaggerate to see. No, it's working on the outside. Now, 
If I want the same radial filter but to work inside, all I have to do is click on the spot, click duplicate. Obviously, click invert so it will work inside. Obviously, remove the last setting and a bit of shadow and maybe a bit of exposure. Let's hit enter. For me, this is a bit too bright. I will use the radial filter to work on that part. Oops, invert. And also maybe saturated a bit, not too much. Hit enter. And it's a bit better. See you, Tom. Thanks for catching up. A bit of contrast. No, for me this works great in, in color. But just for the sake, uh, I'll check it in black and white. The good thing is just click black and white. It will work in black and white, but I prefer it in color. So I click back on color and leave it in color. Just a bit of sharpening. So I go to the detail. Roughly 75. Click on the masking. And that's it. Martin. Yes? Uh, a question about the uh, workflow. Uh, after Lightroom, is it possible to export to Camera Raw? The, uh, you, you, but you have to, no, you have to export the image to your desktop and, and then, but you don't need the Camera Raw because you have everything of the Camera Raw in here. So there is no use of going into the Camera Raw. Because you have it all here. I was thinking about the selective uh, editing I asked you before, because in Camera Raw it is available. That's my only... I'm not familiar with Lightroom, I only use Camera Raw. No, but mainly everything is here, so... Yeah. Yes, very similar, yes. Yeah, no, it, it is, it is. But I, I will check for you, because I, I don't use it, but, but I will check. Maybe it's there and I've never used it and I don't know about it. But mo most probably it's, it's, it is here. But I will check for you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Who, 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 who are you? So I remember. Brian Kassan. All right, Brian. All right. Thank you. I will check. Mela. Suzanne. If you don't want these things to show up here, just come on view, loop info and untick, so you see the better picture. So, but I will show you that lens correction, it's already done, because we did the synchronization. So, portrait, let's see what it happens, it didn't do much. I did a bit of a bit of warming up, it, it's nice. So highlights a bit down. I will do a vignette in the beginning. of contrast, bit of the haze. Uh, some people don't like the dehaze because it, it works everywhere, but I like using it because it, it sharpens and brings out the detail much better. I find it. People don't like it and people love it. So it's all up to you. So, what I want to do is a bit of texture over here, so 
I click back on the radial filter and add a bit of texture. Don't overdo it. I might go to about 20. And I try to put that orange more punchy. Good, Susan. A bit of detail. Now we can see before and after. Martin, it's Renata. Hi, uh, Renata. What is uh, texture, clarity, and the heat? What it uh, gives the photo? Uh, what is the, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's all sharpening. With, with contrast, you sharpen. Yes. With texture, you add texture. This, uh -huh. this is mainly used for, for landscape. Okay. Okay, but it's better to do it with gradient or with radial. So it's not done all over the image. It's only done the parts where you need that texture. Clarity is to sharpen. The uh -huh. haze is to, to, to remove haze or to add haze. But okay. in, in the same time, if you if you're removing the haze, you are sharpening as well. Okay, because sometimes I have this problem, so it's better when to work with with the gradient, or some to choose. Okay, yeah. Yes. It. Yes. Yes. You're welcome. So this is this is now Leon Caruana image. Nice image. No. Transform I don't need, but I need the crop, so I will make sure it is straight. Just a touch to turn it. Guys, I need to scoop. One of shit tight, Geraldine scoop. A bit of gradient. Okay, see you. Thanks for joining. Geraldine. Landscape by so bit of contrast, not too much. Now I'm going to add a bit of texture here. Not too much. Oh, okay, Renata, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure about it. It's a bit too red for me. Let me put a bit down the saturation. Actually, no. I will go from the color to remove a bit of the orangey because I'm sure it's not that red no. a bit of the haze Move a bit down the highlights.
Yes, you, you, you can do with the brush the texture. You have it here as well. Susan. No. I was doing... That's it, maybe I see it in black and white, how it looks. It looks nice in black and white as well, maybe a little more, a bit more contrast. That's it. So, from this to this. Now, Edward image, this is a JPEG. Now, as you can see, I don't have all the functions here. Obviously, it needs a transform, which didn't work that much. So, let me try and fix it a bit better. I switch off. I go on the crop, so I stay in the horizon. Hit enter, and now I come to the transform with oops, with the guided lines all right over here I don't have much where to guide but I need to zoom in I think give me a moment let me get off guide all you have to do now is draw a line you have to be a bit exactly And hit enter so you can zoom out. It's so obviously you will lose a bit. And it's, it's if this happens to you, all you have to do is do some other lines of the horizon. And there you have it. Tick constraint crop. So it doesn't get you those white bits. Obviously, you you will lose a bit. When, uh, I'm saying both brain. When you edit in Lightroom, you cannot save raw. Lightroom will create another file. The dot .xmp, if you choose to have it as an XMP, it has the DNG, which is a raw, uh, uh, the Adobe raw. But Lightroom will always remember the, the edits. So once you go out of Lightroom and come back the next day or whenever, it, it, it remembers all those edits. But as I said before, you have to export it to have that file with the, with the editing that you've done. Now, back to the basic. Bit of contrast. Not too much. A bit of vibrance. Because we have nice colors here. It's a pity it was shot on JPEG Edward because it's a beautiful image. So we sharpen. So uh, you might be hearing me a bit down because sometimes uh, I'm speaking under volume, which is not me.
Ну, это где-то 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 где What to blobs? What the hell is it? Uh, these you mean? All right, huh? Oop. Sorry, switch off that. Better so then. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, Gail, all right, nice image. It's a pity I'm just seeing them, not eating them. All right, we have a bit more white. Bit of contrast, beautiful colors, eh? And I'm sure they taste good as well. I will give this a bit of vibrance, so to give more punch to the colors. A bit more white. Let me check what happens if I... Hmm, better. Now I'm gonna add a bit of texture in the muffins. Or for Suzanne's sake, I'm gonna brush the texture now. So I'm doing this quickly, but when you're doing this, do it obviously carefully. As you can see. Oops. There's the texture. I don't like using the saturation much because saturation saturates all the colors all over the image while the vibrance only works on, on, on certain colors and not all over the image. But for me, from this to this, I think it's great. So, let me continue with yours, guys. Please, any more questions you want to ask? Everybody is so quiet. Oops, it didn't work. So, Ctrl Z and use the ruler. Uh, catalogs, that's another story. <laughs> you need to come for the course when, when we do it, because catalogs, when you save Lightroom, it, it saves as a catalog. So if you work on different catalogs, uh, merge catalogs, that's a lesson by itself nearly. No, you can switch off the mic to ask questions, Susan. Hey, yeah, be a sport. So, bit of shadows. A bit down the highlights from this side.
come for the course when we are back to normal in this world. <laughs> Bit of contrast, not too much. Mm. Yes, it does. It does. I, I will go in the transform to do that. Let me do it for you guys. So, transform, guide. But there key. What what horizon? Susan. Ha <laughs> ha. So tone up down a bit the color for me. You can add the blue. Actually it's becoming a bit better, but the gradient here needs to be adjusted now for my liking. A bit down the white. That's it. This is another tip file which uh, uh, it was already worked on. So if it was a raw file, I'm sure I could have done better editing with it. When you want, Kate, I will teach you. <laughs> a bit of the haze. Hi, right, Stefan. Yes, yes, that's that's what I do. I always do in Lightroom. Mainly I do in Lightroom, but it depends the work that you do. But as I said before, if I need to, I finish up in, in, in Photoshop. Mainly from this to this. That's good. Yep, yes, Stefan, I agree. So, transform, auto, crop. I'm gonna use these lines, sort of, although they're not going straight to the person. They lead you a bit to the person, so yes, yes, you can always go back and edit and do everything that you want. I use a gradient so I light up more the person, check that invert is in, so I'm working inside. Bit of contrast. Can I die can I get the street? And I'm gonna use the gradient. But invert always. Can you show a bit more how clone is working? I will, but it doesn't work very well like in in, uh, in Photoshop. It, it does sort of content aware and the clone, but I, I will show you. Let me try a bit here so, so you will see. So, over here you have. Not well enough. The spot removal. You have clone, 
and you have heel. I prefer the heel, although it doesn't work. All you have to do is brush, and it chooses a similar place, or else drag it where you want. Over here it worked okay, Renata, but it doesn't always work as good as in Photoshop, unfortunately, maybe in the future. They will let it and improve it more. Yes, 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 Stefan. Hundred <coughs> percent. No, since I have this bit of sun, I'm going to lose the radial filter. So I tone it down a bit with the highlight, and you have to switch on the invert margin. And the white. Obviously, I just don't over. Don't go overboard with, with, with the selection of the radial, so it will work better for you. A bit of vibrance. And a bit of blue. And now we can see the before and after. Well, Luana, it should have started this month, but because of COVID, obviously it's postponed. We will see when we get back to normal and decide when to do it. You will obviously receive an email from MIPD from Kevin or myself or whoever so yeah for now this is the normal unfortunately as for no I didn't like so I have to use it crop This is a raw point with Yeah, it is boring. But good for me, I still go to work and shoot. <laughs> so now a bit of fire. Turn it down from the top, from the left side and from the right side. Over here, try to fix it a bit. Turn down the high line, I will catch it off. And, uh, But let's yes, exactly, Edward. Good point. Obviously, it needs a bit of texture. I'm gonna transform it to black and white because it will definitely look good. Tone curve, I'm gonna give it a strong contrast. <clears throat> a bit more shadows.
beating masking hold on the alt <laughs> Dai, Bastiafan. So, before and after. <clears throat> Viorica. More like right. this needs transform. It will look like great. To crop out the door, I know that it needs a bit of haze, a little bit more punch. Thank you very much. Obviously. This kind of building, it needs texture all over, so I just put texture up to 20. A bit of contrast. Obviously, be careful when you're editing is what you're editing for. I, I, I'm assuming that I'm editing to upload on social media. If you're going to print, obviously, you need less sharpening because automatically when you print it sharpens a bit so then it will be overdone and it, it won't look very good i'm sorry i'm sounding because i'm hearing myself a bit boring but this is the first time talking to skype to you all but it's like talking to myself and i'm feeling stupid but cannot do anymore. I will give more vibrance to the image. Actually, I want to pump up the reds a bit more. There you go, before and after. That looks a bit well. But I want to darken a bit the top. Yes, it does. Yeah, Viorica, uh, apart from the door and the window, which, yes, it might do a good image as well, I, I like this bench. What I, I would do is just remove this notice board or whatever it is. But this bench, at, at to the image, in my opinion. Yeah, thank you, Keith. <laughs> so, beautiful image. This is yours, Viorica, as well. Shadows, highlights, now. Don't overdo the highlights all over, just use the radial filter. Obviously, invert. Oh, don't overdo it. A bit of contrast. The lighting on her face and on the table here, it's fantastic, eh? I just want to add a bit of shadow here. Invert all the time, I keep forgetting.
Actually, I won't do that much. It's good. Let me try the transform to see how it will come. Okay. Good perspective. Maybe what is with the radio presenter? No, thank you. Yeah, you can clean the outside or maybe go in Photoshop and, and do an IC. Maybe one of your landscape photos and from the window, okay. But from the studies, as you can see, when, when you shoot a good photo, you don't have much editing to do and all, all you need to do is just improve it a bit. And that bit makes it a much better image. Well, I think I've gone to all the images that you sent me, people. I hope you enjoyed it. You wanted moto, mono, we'll try it mono. No problem, before I close. Yes, it looks good as well. A bit of tone curve. Voila. Hope you enjoyed it, people. Hopefully I will upload this session, boring, with my voice, but I, I hope you, you, you enjoyed and, and seen what Lightroom can do. And some people who likes Lightroom, who likes Bridge, who likes Camera Raw, who likes Photoshop, it's just a matter of taste. All in all, the good thing is that you end up doing what you want with the image. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks for all that you joined in and hopefully Thank you, we'll see. Bye to all. Thank you, Renata. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Thanks guys, hope to see you on, on the Lightroom course, which will be obviously more interesting and more learning. Looking forward, looking forward. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye everyone, nice evening. Good night, guys. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you, Martin. Hmm?